All right. Good morning, everybody. This is a meeting of the Wellfleet Housing Authority, and it is being recorded, as you just heard. I'm glad everybody could be here this morning. Such a beautiful day. Hmm. Um, we will start with the minutes of July 8th, and I will bring them up, hopefully. <laughs> That's the wrong thing. Here we go. All right, we'll give everybody a minute to read through. Okay, everybody have a chance. Any additions or corrections? If not, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of July 8th? So moved. Mia? Second. Second, Gary. All in favor, uh, I will do a roll call vote. Uh, Mia? Aye. Gary? Aye. Richard? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Elaine? Aye. Okay, great, thank you. Next on the agenda, we have bills and rental assistance, always sort of linked, but Gary, do we have other bills too? Sure, uh, I'm happy to. Um, we received a bill uh, for from the CDP uh, for uh, assistance or for the technical assistance that they provide and it's for $675. So if someone wanted to make a motion to pay 675 to the CDP for technical assistance. So moved. I'll second that. Is it for a specific time period, Gary? Uh, it's for uh, the month of July. July, okay. okay. It's been moved and seconded to pay the CDP $675 for their technical assistance in July. Um, all in favor? Sarah? Aye. Richard? Aye. Mia? Aye. Gary? Aye. Elaine? Aye. Um, okay. we, ha we have a um, bill from Homeless Prevention Council for $693.75, excuse me, six nine three and 75 cents uh, for emergency COVID rental assistance. Uh, so I would entertain a motion. I do have some comments. I mean, I shouldn't say I would, and someone mm -hmm. could make the motion. Mm -hmm. So moved. Thank you, Mia. Second. <clears throat> Second. Thank you. So. Um, Any more discussion? Yeah, so two things. Um, uh, Richard, um, I know you've been meeting uh, with Maggie. Is this the person who's receiving this, have they reached towards the end or at the end of their eligibility, do you know? Uh, I don't believe yet, Gary. Uh, okay. I spoke with Maggie yesterday. We did not. This person is a relative, Gary, I believe, to the total amount has still got some room there. Okay, good. I was just going to say whether we needed to move her to the regular rental system. No, no, there's okay. nothing. I would, I, did you get my email yesterday? I did. I did. Okay. I saw that. Yeah. So everything stays for, the same. Yes. Right. Okay, uh, my second question is, um, there was a notice placed uh, 
yesterday for the public from the tax collector about foreclosure for non-payment of taxes for wealth lesions. And are we able, should we choose to and make this um, emergency um, assistance available for that purpose? Hmm. That that might be a separate question aside from the vote. Maybe we should vote. The, yeah, okay, that's fine. That, it just occurred to that, me that, right. Yeah. Right, okay, that's fine. So mm -hmm. and I'm done with my comments. Okay, any more discussion on the? Yeah, Elaine, I would just say, Gary and I have, I, I just wanna say this out loud again. Um, when we approve regular rental assistance, when we go to that, that will be for September. Right. Okay. And that's the way we do it. We do it for the, 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 the coming month. The emergency assistance billing kind of lags <laughs> behind. Yes. The reason is, Richard, that in the case of rental assistance, we pay that directly. Right. In the case of emergency, we are reimbursing HPC for the assistance that they've done under the program. Right. Gary, I'm just saying we all ought to be aware that they're not right. they're not quite in sync. That's all. You are correct. Okay. So 693.75. Right. Okay. Uh, all in favor, Sarah? Uh, hi, Sarah. Well, Sarah. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Hi. Popping up on my screen again. Go away, Siri. Uh, Sarah, we're taking a vote on to pay. Well, no, I, I, could, I could hear. I was just on, on mute. So I kept saying, I, I. <laughs> yeah. Yes, 693. <laughs> Richard? Aye. Mia? Yeah. Aye. Gary? Aye. Elaine? Aye. I'm doing the roll call vote because Harry Turkanian does it for the trust and anything Harry does, I think is a good idea. <laughs> Elaine, we, we could move all the bills together if you wanted to speed it up. So no, no I, think, I think separate is good. Okay, uh, for rental assistance, as uh, Richard said, for the month of September, our normal rental assistance, the amount of 1,447, 1,447. And is that for how many households? Three. 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 That's good. Okay. Um, I'm, and this is for September? Correct. Okay. I move we pay uh, $1,447 in rental assistance for September subsidies. Sarah, second? second? Mm -hmm. Yep. Sarah? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? All in favor? Sarah? Aye. Richard? Aye. Mia? Aye. Harry? Aye. Elaine? Aye. Okay. The next item uh, is uh, a motion to, uh, we need a motion to pay um, Elaine McElroy um, reimbursement for the uh, cost of the brochures that we produced in the spring. Uh, and the amount is $709.97. Um, we would hope to take this out of a, a CPA account, and uh, if not, out of our uh, general administrative account. It's so just... moved. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, okay, great. Is there a second? Second. Gary, this is, this is our Elaine. Yeah, Elaine, that's yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Under discussion, I'll just say this was for the Housing Angels brochure that Darren Weatherspoon so generously um, created for us, beautiful uh, brochure, and had it printed through a huge internet printer to get us the best price. And they had to be paid by a credit card right away, which we can't really do with the town. So I, I did um, use my credit card. And uh, that's the story. <laughs> Thank you, Elaine. Any more discussion? All in favor? Sarah? Aye. Richard? Aye. Mia? Aye. 
Gary. Hi. Elaine. Hi. Elaine, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I know this. Uh, what is your house number? It's 91 Pine Point Road. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm working on, I have stuff to send you, Gary, but I also contacted the company again to try to get a copy of the invoice. It's actually stamped paid. <laughs> So we'll see, but if not, we'll I, won't, I, I won't submit it for a few days anyway. Okay, great. All right, excellent. Um, that's it for our bills. Yes. Alrighty. Um, next up is um, we received a request from TRI, which is a, a company um, applying to manage the uh, CDBG rehab program. And we have we sent them a letter of support um, last year. They asked for one this year. Um, I will share it just for you to see. Um, it was due Monday. Uh, they ideally wanted it Monday before I dated it the end of July, but they said it would be uh, fine to get it to them after the meeting today. Um, this is for the next round of the block grant. The current block grant that they are administering is a Wellfleet has five slots um, to be filled for the rehab. We don't know how many we will have in this next round. Um, the current round, Dennis is the lead town. Dennis and Wellfleet and know, Harwich, I think are together. And for the one coming up, uh, this next one coming up, Brewster is the lead town, Brewster, Dennis, and Wellfleet. Um, this was a letter they gave us the template for, it, and all we had to do was really approve it and sign it and send it. Um, so I would ask for a motion to send a support a letter to DHCD in support of TRI's application to manage the FY21 CDBG rehab grant. So moved. Second. Second, Mia. How are you doing, Richard? Do you have it? I'll know in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, Richard writes that I, uh, are we at the comment stage? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so can we send more than one support letter? Should we choose to? There are other C, uh, CDP is also an well, applicant they have, for they have, this. They haven't asked for one. They so. haven't asked. No, I'm just saying, could, could we theoretically? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know why we weren't asked if they are also applying, but right. um, since they didn't. That's fine. We can go ahead with this one. Um, the second one comment is, you know, um, I forgot, and uh, that's also the childcare vouchers there, which we have been promoting the rehab portion of it, but is someone else promoting the childcare portion of it? As I understand it, the childcare vouchers are directly through um, Bailey Boyd Associates. Um, I, I looked on their web, because I asked Maggie or Jean, and she said Bailey Boyd is doing that directly. And there is information on their website. So we should look into. Right. Who, who would be responsible out. for promoting the child care vouchers in Wellfleet? I guess that's a. Yeah. Is, is that us or is that someone else? Or, we, we no longer have the, um, the preschool program at the COA. They have, they have not reopened since the pandemic. The sea babies? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what, who would be the advocate for this. Well, I guess we can contact Bailey Boyd Associates and ask. Yeah. Um, and if we're supposed to be promoting it, we can, we can certainly put something out there uh, to do it or maybe send it to the school or yeah, that would be a good thing for, for backpack mail and the Montessori. Yeah. Kathleen, you had your hand up. Um, I would suggest um, you contact Suzanne Grout-Thomas. 
She's head of social services here in Wellfleet. Mm -hmm. um, she would know um, about mm -hmm. the child care vouchers. Okay. Elaine? Yeah, yes, Richard. Um, I don't know the level of detail you want here, but we don't have to get involved into the lead towns or anything like that, do no. we? No. Okay, so we have a motion to provide a letter supporting TRI's application to manage the uh, buy down grant, a uh, buy down rehabilitation grant program. Um, it, it should say C, not buy down, but CDBG rehab. Okay. CDBG rehab grant program. It does, it does include child care vouchers here in, in their letter. Uh, Richard, I will, I, will, I will email you a copy of this letter because you probably should attach it okay. to the minutes. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Is it FY21 or FY22? It's FY21. They're running behind because of COVID. Yeah. All right. So are you okay for now with that, Richard? Let's yes. change buy down to CDBG. Yes, I have it. Okay, uh, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor, Richard? Aye. Gary? Aye. Mia? Aye. <laughs> Sarah? Aye. Elaine? Aye. Great, thank you. I'll get that off to them. Okay, now I have to find my Zoom. Oh, I can stop sharing in that for now. <laughs> um, Next on the agenda, I put the mission statement and goals for WHA, which is all part of the intensive trust piece we're doing with MHP. Um, we did approve our mission statement last meeting, but we were also supposed to do goals and strategies. We have another trust meeting at the end of the month about this. I, I did not do anything. I have to admit, I'm, my brain is kind of <laughs> not wrapping itself around this stuff. Um, and I think as much as possible, we're supposed to be building off of the, um, the chart. Gary, you can let me know if that's what the local housing partnership did. Well, did, we, you, did you actually write goals and well, we, we have a, an easier task. We had a charge from the select board, which lists the, the um, activities or the goals that, uh, um, that we were supposed to focus on. And so we went through it with the eye of that now that we have the trust, which of those should move to the trust. And uh, we, I, I think I sent that to you, Elaine, but okay. we took two or three off of the list and and um, put them onto the trust. They're largely about um, property. Um, and then the, uh, the, the others uh, we just kept. So I feel like our, we, we, we had a framework to work from. Okay. I mean, we have this chart that was developed out of the small committee that's meeting with MHP about the three different organizations. We also have our needs assessment document, which has a similar list of things for the housing authority. Um, but that, you know, that was all done really <coughs> with just the housing authority in mind and, and activities that are probably going to be taken over by the trust. Um, I don't know if anybody really likes to write goals or strategies, if we could have a little subcommittee to work on it and try to get something together to at least a draft for the end of the month. Richard, I was wondering if that interested you at all. It doesn't, but I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> the old army volunteer <laughs> system. Well, you're, you're such a good wordsmith that- um, uh, I, I, I'm, 
Okay, Elaine, I think you and I will have to have a conversation about this and I'll, um, my, th my own thinking on, on this as I, you know, kind of rummage around about it is um, housing authorities being state entities to some degree have, have directions from, from that source, you know, that cuts across in, in, in a general way, in a, you know, mission and goals way, uh, cuts across all, you know, towns and municipalities. Um, you know, I, I, I guess my own sense is we don't have to reinvent the wheel here. It's just that most, most housing authorities, their goal is to own and ma manage. Right, we right. Don't do, which we right. don't do. Right. And, and it seems like, you know, a lot of our um, tasks now are more focused on programs supporting ownership yeah. and rental. Yeah. Um, and and keeping in touch with other towns as we've been doing, where the trust is now really taking over the land RFP, right kind of things. Okay, uh, I'll 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 say yes to your request, and um, we'll we'll spend some time together, and we'll we'll figure this out. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to join the subcommittee? Okay. Elaine, I just note that that meeting is not the end of the month, it's on the 16th. Of August? Yes. Uh, that's the trust meeting, not the, not the oh, one. You're that's talking the, about the MHP, MHP meeting. MHP yeah, meeting. I'm sorry. You're right. On the 25th. I just noticed that the trust meeting is the same night as a big public forum on the Hilta stuff. And I don't know if that might mean couple of our trust members might rather be at that. We'll see. Okay, well, thank you, Richard. I, you know, um, I'll, I'll make sure you have all the sort of guidance that we got and all right. then we'll put something together. Thank you. Um, project updates. The big, big news, of course, is um, that we received three uh, responses for the 95 Lawrence RFP. The evaluation committee will begin meeting soon to evaluate all three ap appeared to meet the minimum requirements. And our goal is to make a recommendation to the select board by mid-September. Um, <coughs> the proposals are on the town website so you're free to read them, look through, and um, the evaluation committee meetings will be public meetings too. So, any other questions, news we want to share? Talk, do I talk about Old Kings Highway? Um, we we got an update from Habitat. Right. Uh, maybe down under the updates from. Oh, I'm sorry. Friday. Yeah. 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 I think that's it for 95 Lawrence Road. It's very exciting. Um, so on we go. Housing Angels. Um, as you know, the big event is coming up next Wednesday. We really want to ask each and every one of you to um, send out a personal invite to some friends and, uh, and even ask them to bring a friend and to, to um, register for it through the um, Prez Hall website. Um, Stephen was supposed to play music at the Flying Fish tonight from five to seven, which we were hoping to use as a big promotional thing, but I think it's gonna be rained out, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, the, the flyer has been has made the rounds. It was put out by the forum, I think, and the Chamber of Commerce. But Sharon, want to give us an update on the whole Housing Angels? Well, um, <clears throat> you know, I haven't. There haven't been any more button sales that I know of, and um, I have no idea what Lee's doing with the yoga. 
I kind of got tired of nudging people. So, uh, and I got pulled away on other projects. So um, we'll see where they go, but I will collect buttons and offer them at the um, story and song event also. Um, That'll be fun. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I think as far as publicity, I think we are covering, you know, every base we can possibly cover. And um, I did mention to somebody, I don't know whether this will pan out or not, but my brother-in-law is very good friends with Jamie Raskin. And he has asked him if he wouldn't mind making a little plug for us at his sold out event, which is a couple of days before ours. And that would be very, very nice. <laughs> um, I think it's a cause that Jamie certainly could get behind. Um, and that's about all I have to say on that. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, Susan Spear asked Stephen to look into some of the details, you know, just to confirm, supposedly Prez Hall says they don't need kind of assistance setting up for it Wednesday night? That's what, um, well, as Stephen and I had discussed that at our last meeting. I mean, as far as people, they're not gonna be setting up chairs outside. People will be bringing their own and, and blankets and whatnot. Um, I don't know if they set up a standby set of chairs inside, but I can certainly reach out to Vanessa and ask her, you know, what, pre-event um, chores we should be helping with or could be helping with. Yeah. As Stephen yeah. says, it's a pretty well-oiled machine there. So, um, right. you know, we might just get in the way. <laughs> yeah, I think he was gonna check with her. Susan asked him if he would do okay. that. Perfect. But would you, like, would you like a bunch of us just to show up like by four to be around to? Um, well, I don't think that could hurt. I don't think that could hurt. I mean, it'd be nice to see each other in, in the flesh. <laughs> um, and then if there's anything that needs to be done, I mean, you could ask Stephen that same question. Okay. Um, and, you know, Gary's working on the donation forms. Thank you very much, Gary. That's really excellent. And um, Susan had said something about putting them on chairs, but there won't be chairs. So <laughs> now I think we have to hand them out as people come in. Um, they also have the, uh, the last song of the night will be a, a group uh, thing and it has the chorus on it. So right. I think people, you can tell people that as the, uh, even if they don't want to take the donation sheet. <laughs> That'll put it in their face. Right. At least they'll, uh, they'll look at it for that purpose. Um, Sarah, I had a couple of questions for you. Um, to get it out, I sent it to somebody at the school, but mm -hmm. I don't know if it has gone out. Is that something you can check on or sure. can you send it out? Do you mean the elementary school or the middle school or high school? Or? Um, I sent, I can tell you who I sent it to and it was somebody that I got the name from, from uh, Rebecca at Town Hall. Um, but, oh, okay. But anyway, the answer is, let's send it to all of them. Okay, if we can. perfect. We're um, getting communication. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay, go ahead, yeah. And the other group I was thinking of, since it's housing, is the, the real estate agents, don't you have some kind of a network? Yes, I can absolutely send it out to all of the realtors in the area, but I also have a, uh, I was going to include it in my next sort of monthly email to clients, which I think might be a good thing to do. Great. Great. Yeah. So the more outreach we can do, I, I've gone around and put them up in various places, um, the flyers, but um, I think if everybody takes a few and if you <laughs> walk around and you see you don't see one anywhere you go uh, put one up and but david, definitely talk it up david was just uh in in town center and he said the flyers are everywhere <laughs> <laughs> right. well it's you know uh, we've had yeah. rainy days so uh, yeah. you're the gary um, thank you for doing that gary that's great the other thing um you had mentioned the brochures before, you know, those, who has the brochures? Uh, and well, Elaine, I think has so, some boxes in her storage. 
Elaine, can you bring some brochures to the event? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Please. yeah no, we'll definitely have them there. And, right. and you know, we should talk about uh, ma mailing them out. Um, I think at the end of the summer, maybe, or early fall, do a, a mailing. We have a lot of them. That's We got a lot to send yeah. to property owners. Right. So. Well, the good news is that they don't have anything on there that's dated. Okay. So if there's if there's some next summer, you know, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. But but I think a mailing is a great idea if we you know if we can swing that. And it occurs to me, Elaine, we're doing that uh, thing with the neighbors at 95 Lawrence. Um, mm -hmm. Would be a good idea to bring some to that as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. That well. Would be it looks like the weather looks like it's going to be great next week. So uh, let's hope so. Yeah, this week has been kind of a wash, but I mean, I love it. But it's you know, <laughs> you've got an outdoor event. It's not not yeah. so great, yeah. especially because I mean, I know Cres Hall. They they say that if it rains, people can come inside, but they have to be vaccinated yeah. and wear a mask. So uh, and they have a, they've been upgraded their air handling system in Prez Hall <clears throat> significantly, I think, in light of COVID. So, well, so anyway. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't had this yet, but do you have to bring your little card? I mean, or you just say? It, there was somewhere where David and I were looking at it and it said proof of vaccination and mask required. And, the, and he asked Justina, because you know, uh, Justine, because, you know, our daughter's getting married in Prez Hall in, in early October. So we have kind of a vested interest in what this policy is. Um, and so Justine said, oh, that, that's a typo. So I'm not entirely sure what their policy is, to tell you the truth. Maybe we should just, I've never used it yet, but maybe we should bring it that night if that's a, a, a thing. Well, I really hope we don't have to go inside. I think that no, would no, me yeah. too, me too. Oh, and just FYI, uh, you, you in your minutes, I saw as you all were going through them, there was that piece about um, uh, allowing five hundred dollars for um, sound and housing angels. We don't need that. The um, press hall is taking care of it. Oh, nice, good. Um, do we still have the buttons, Richard, the Got Housing buttons? Yeah, I have them all. I mean, oh, you Ann, have them all. Right. Ann Suggs is, has them and, um, you know, was handing them out to galleries and stuff. And um, we can decide if we want to have them at the, at the event. I don't know whether we want to hand them out for free or I mean, well, whatever we want to do, it's fine. I think it might be good to have them. We should all be wearing them at least. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. For Great. Sure. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sharon, for all the work. And, and uh, Elaine, you and Gary, uh, and uh, we don't know about Harry, uh, will be getting up before the intermission and just saying a few words. Are, are you aware of that? <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> okay. Just making sure. Yeah. Any other questions about Housing Angels? Okay. Uh, next on the agenda uh, under buy downs, as um, Sarah mentioned earlier, the, um, we hope and expect that the closing for the five day road buy down will be on August 13th. And our second, uh, our person who was picked second in the lottery has been notified that we are going to fund another one um, courtesy of the trust and the funds. Um, in working with the accountant, Gary was told that um, our donations that to housing totaled $83,000 last year. That's good. Uh, wonderful. And we had our 500,000 infusion from town meeting. So we felt very worthwhile to try to 
get in the second buy down while DHCD was allowing us to use the, that initial lottery. Um, I, I have heard that she's getting to work on it, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. Um, and then also, Gary, do you wanna just report of the CPA application? Sure, we, we put in an application to fund another buy down uh, per our vote last meeting, um, and that was to uh, request two hundred and ten thousand um, dollars. The ten thousand is the cost of the uh, administration of the program, but would increase the amount available from one seventy five to two hundred, given the increase in in house pricing. Um, and they will vote on that on the 18th of this month, which would then go to the select board and, and ultimately to uh, town meeting, uh, assuming there's one in September. Um, I would also note that we are still awaiting how much money there is actually available uh, pending the uh, accounting reset at town hall. So all this is subject to uh, funds being available. Well, you know, if all goes well, we will have been able to carry out nine buy downs. That's nine, yeah. nine homes, you know. Gary, Gary, that application is made uh, by, by the housing authority or the trust? Uh, we did discuss it at the trust and we decided to go forward with it uh, through the housing authority. Okay. Sort of in the vein of keeping the programs that we've instituted under housing authority. Right. And the person who is uh, the second person on our lottery list is uh, um, a, a local wealth leasing with several children, I think in middle school. Yep. Very exciting. That she yeah. got it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. And, and then just uh, general updates um, from all our different groups. Maybe we'll start with um, what, what Gary um, mentioned earlier is we did get an um, update from Habitat about the Old Kings Highway for homes that now the court case is. April of 2023. Oh, 2023? 22, no, April oh. 2022. We, they were hoping for something this month or early September, but. No go. Well darn. Really frustrating, that's... yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the news about that. <laughs> um, other news with housing authority and our our housing specialist services through CDP, um, we are continuing our talks about a new website. And um, somebody from CDP, I can't remember her position, but is is willing to help us put out requests, but. Um, did want a scope, uh, a sort of a, us to define what we want our website to do. Who is it for? What's it supposed to do? And what elements do we want? I just realized, I'm so sorry, Gary. I didn't, I didn't reply to you. My boyfriend had COVID last week and he was oh, really no. sick. And so oh, I no. have dropped the ball and everything. Um, Are you so I'm so sorry. I just, I just realized just now I didn't reply to your email, but I will do it. We can still work on that if you want to. Sure. I mean, yes, I'll do it today. If you cannot, you know, it's no uh, time limit on it. Cool. Yeah. I mean, really simple and, you know, simple. Simple, mid. right. Yeah. So, yeah. Some, I think mid. after, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, so it's Nina and she's the, the uh, communication director at CDP who we talked to. And um, so I, I think it is a, um, a redesign, uh, uh, make it visually more appealing. Um, on a in a platform, if that's the right word, or an application that we could 
make updates on? We also, uh, we were going to talk about um, functionality, right? Things that we wanted right. to be able to do through the right. website. I, I think yeah. in our discussion, now there's a lot of information about programs that are historical, 10 years old. And what we really want to focus on is what can we do to help people? Um, so if we could, we can make that front and center. And then there's the whole question of whether we can do credit cards and electronic um, submissions um, or donations, excuse me. Um, but there's a lot of updating. It doesn't say anything, for instance, about the trust. Um, I think now. we could do a lot more with resource direction. Very easy to find. I think for people who come there. You might. Yeah. You might know the answer to this. Wait, wait just a second, Sharon. Yeah. You might know the answer to this, but um, the woman said that there is a standard platform that the towns use for the website and that they might have or be able to do. I don't remember, Elaine, do you remember the name of what she said? Civic Plus or um, Civic Plus. Town, I think town that's Hall. right. You're right. So, yeah, so. I think the town uses that. What Civic Plus in my experience, the, the, the version that the town has, you can't do transactions. So that would still have to be separate. Um, okay. But I can look into that. Okay, thank I'll, you. I'll look into right. that. So, um, and then the, the whole question of how much we think it would, might cost, but um, she was saying you could do something big, but we were trying to do something manageable. Right. right. I'm sorry, Sharon. Um, so I just the other day I was um, someone asked me sort of a, an out of town relative asked me about ADUs and I, um, you know, I know I realize that we don't have a summary sheet and I should work on that. I was thinking September, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> but I noticed that the FAQs, I mean, I think that the FAQs about ADUs is a useful thing to have on our well fleet affordable housing website but it wasn't there okay correct just to give you an example is it still says just eight adus it really doesn't say anything about right ADUs. right and and i'm hoping that with the new platform that would be a place where we could really right. uh put in like a how-to and summaries and really give people um some support or at least link to something else um so i'm just putting a, in a plug to that right i think really we need probably as we go forward, a person or two on the housing authority and the partnership, that would be our, our conduits, I don't know what the right word is, to be able to make those changes on the platform. So I'm gonna get to you in a second, Kathleen, but Sharon, um, under our work with CDP, they said they felt like they had a potential starting point for a uh, step-by-step -step or how to for ADU. So they are they are putting some Good. time in on that. Which is great. And then we can tailor it to our own particular. Yep. Mm -hmm. Kathleen? A um, couple of things. I don't know, um, uh, just first comes to mind with the ADU. Um, you may be aware that one is coming up before the zoning board of appeals at their next meeting. Um, this is the second go around for this family to create an ADU. Um, and maybe um, someone from the housing authority or Sharon uh, could sit in at that zoning meeting um, and offer support to that family. It's my mm -hmm. first comment. My second comment is, um, not sure, do you have a, a, a place on your agenda where you have topics for future concern? Um, I didn't see one. So I'm not sure if my jumping in and updates to um, make a suggestion is the right way to go. Um, but here it is. Okay. Peter and Diane Hall own a 12-room motel off of Route 6 that's tucked conveniently behind um, JB's Pizza and um, a small cottage condominium called um, White Pines or something like that. Um, I've had the opportunity, because it's in the neighborhood of where I work, um, to look at that property. And I'd like to suggest that maybe someone from the housing authority make an outreach to Peter and Diane Hall and see if they would um, have an interest in selling it to the town. This would be um, 
12 studio units, which could be rehabbed um, uh, and made affordable. Um, it's working right now for them um, to house a couple of employees. Um, but by, basically it's been serving um, this community very quietly um, for people um, that have not been able to find a place to live, much like the um, um, Cape View or whatever it's called in Truro has been operating. Um, the town of Dennis has a very um, successful um, batting average for taking um, rundown motels similar to this one and turning them into affordable housing units. Um, just a suggestion, I'm always looking at where, um, where we can go to um, create more housing, um, workforce or year round or, or whatever. And it may be at um, this particular juncture at Peter and Diane Hall's um, you know, lifetime that they would consider doing this, um, selling this to create um, affordable housing. Um, just a suggestion, I, I, you know, you guys can put it on a, um, you know, a, another meeting, but um, um, if anybody gets the time, uh, do a drive by and check out the property. What's it called again? It's, 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 it's there's no name, Sharon. It's uh -oh. just, yeah. I thought you said Whispering Pines or something like that. That's yeah. a cottage, cottage colony that it's next door to. It's next to so, it, okay. Yeah. Okay. On the subject of um, renovating motels, the town of Orleans last night took a really big step toward, uh, they want to use the Governor Prince property for affordable housing, the one there on yeah. across from Sunbird. And they're really moving, they had a protracted debate about whether they should review it for other community uses, but it really looks like they're going to use it for housing, which is awesome. Um, and may also be a model for us if we want to do that in the future. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, Kathleen, I'll also take your suggestion to add future topics to future agendas. It's a good idea. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, anything from Local Housing Partnership, Gary? No, but can I go back to the ADU question? Um, the ADU bylaw is not yet in effect until it has been uh, reviewed and approved by the Attorney General. I know it has been submitted I don't know how long it takes. So the people who are having the hearing tomorrow, is it? Whatever yes. Kathleen said, um, but they must be applying under the AADU because the ADU bylaw is no longer, is not yet in effect. Except I thought that, that the, um, the bylaws went into effect as soon as they were voted on at town meeting, but there was always a possibility that the AG could overturn it. You, you, you may be you may be right. I, I don't I don't know, but all I'm suggesting is that um, I, maybe we should communicate with those people depending upon what they are hoping under what which bylaw they are applying. It's all made so much more difficult by virtue of the fact that we don't have a building inspector and that there hasn't been any. I just spoke to Derry, um, the the assistant. At, um, at the building department and she's like completely overwhelmed. Completely overwhelmed and she's not getting any extra help. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sharon, it's my understanding, and I guess this is for all of us, and I don't know that this is accurate, but uh, what, what you said about, you know, the law going into effect and what Gary said about it being, you know, reviewed by, by the state's attorney general, both of those things are true. So if anybody goes forward with anything, they more or less go forward at their own risk. Right. Okay. Right, right. And then, you know, if they, they go, go forward, they go, they, they go forward, presuming that everything is okay. Yes. And, and I think if they go forward with the ADU and the AG overturns it, then they can go back and get it permitted as an AADU. Well, that, that, then you get, what I'm saying is they could get brought to a halt there or, or, or have to revise whatever it is they're gonna do. Yeah. 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 Mm, 
Okay. Um, um, it occurs to me, Elaine, I'm sorry. Uh, Kathleen, did you have your hand up again? No. Okay. Uh, you asked me about LHP. Um, I just had a, a moment where uh, Freeman Ave, I didn't know what, where, where, <laughs> forgive me, but was I supposed to do anything on that? Where does that stand? Well, I think we put it into the trust sands. Um, you know, we talked about it at the trust. Uh, Harry asked for all the background info we had. I thought I thought our minutes said something about Sarah and Freeman Ave, um, but I wasn't clear what that was. So, so I sent the um, last um, RFP that we did um, for uh, development of a, of a limited number of units. Uh, I think I sent it to everybody, but Sarah, I think I sent it to you. Uh, at our this, last, is, this is at for our, 2082, I think. At our last meeting, Elaine urged that the Wellfleet Housing Authority take the lead on Freeman Ave. That was the, the thing. And then Sarah said she wouldn't. You said you would send her the 2082. So I did. Right. And that's kind of where it's at. Okay. Ah, so that's on me. Hold on. I'm going to. I don't think no, I, I saw it, Gary. Let me. I'm just going to go to my email and make sure if I have not, it. I can certainly send it to you again. That's uh, okay. Sarah's not, not a big I, think, deal. I think you just sent it to Sarah because I don't think I got it, Gary. So if, not that if, I, people, if people want, I could send it to everybody on the committee. No, I'm going to be working with Elaine on the mission statement. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, I'm just, I was just thinking about, oh, dear, was I supposed <laughs> to do something on that? And I forgot. All right. What, what about Payne Hollow? Uh, we haven't heard anything more yet. No update on something was supposed to be getting settled, but haven't heard any more news yet. And we, there was a request that we put um, money into escrow. Yeah, we're waiting for a, a draft document from um, um, the lawyer for the trust to consider okay. doing that. I mean, I really, I think we should do it. I mean, if, if it's slowing down the final thing, but um, We'll see, see if we have anything from to look at at our next trust meeting. Yeah, we have a lot of properties waiting to be built, you know, 60 between 95, Payne Hollow, Old Kings Highway, two buy downs. That's that's real progress, Elaine. Well, we have to make get them but, done. Yeah. No, but at least it's, you know, it's yeah. It's at one point along the road where it used to be at another point along the road. And, <laughs> and yep. Okay. Well that that's great. It was great that you could all could be here. Mia, are you isolating? Are you I was up until um a couple days ago. I'm still mostly not going to work, but uh -huh. we're if we're technically out of quarantine and he's recovered so we're very lucky oh so sorry to hear that I'm so sorry it's been an adventure get vaccinated yep. was he vaccinated was he one of those breakthroughs uh, he is now but he had oh. to put it off and then bad luck and um but yeah. he is now, okay so. mm -hmm. okay well we have to continue to try to be careful through this summer mm -hmm. yes yeah, yeah. okay all right. Well, thank you all very, very much. I'll see you all next Wednesday. Okay. Elaine. Or if it stops raining, come to the Flying Fish. Party. Elaine, when is our next meeting? Oh, it's uh, September. Uh, it's September 2nd. September 2nd. Second. Are we going to meet? First Thursday. Thank Mia. you, Elaine. Okay, Mia, could care. you stay for a second? I have a question about the, the website thing. Um, on, on the uh, well, affordable housing website that we're talking about, we have on there, there's, you're able to view the rental assistance application, but the rental assi assistance application that's on there is really way out of date. Uh, we had reviewed it, uh, re revised it. Uh, I worked with Mary Rogers on doing that several years ago now, and that's not even on there. But my question is basically this. 
would it be possible on the website to have somebody be able to fill it out online or does, is that a whole other world? Yeah, you would have to use a website hosting platform that allowed you to do fillable forms, which okay. you've, you've done a million of those online. You go in and you have to put in your yeah. information somewhere and you just submit it. So yeah, that would just be something that I can, as I work on this with Gary, I can note that that's a function that we would like. Uh, is that something we'd like to be able to fill out well, and submit I, entirely I, online? I didn't even know, you know, if, if it were possible in, in that particular place, but uh Certainly, let's think about it because it might streamline a lot of things and and make uh, make the whole idea of of you know getting a help a, a lot more accessible. I think so. It might not be. You might have to sort of uh, you'd have to retype the whole thing as a fillable form, which I'm sure we could do. Um, okay. It would be a little bit of work, but you could do that. Yeah, and or we could get someone to do it for us who knows what they're doing. So okay, that would certainly be a, a worthwhile expense. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. My suggestion is going to be that we, once we know what we want, we find a webmaster to design it and be the basic support person. And then you assign one person from the authority. It can be me or somebody else. And one person from the partnership to have um, admin uh, powers so they can go and edit it and do anything else. Okay. All right. Good. Thanks. That's helpful. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Okay, um, Thanks, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All in favor, we can raise our hands for this one. <laughs> okay, thank you. Take care, everybody. Thank you, Bye. everybody. Stay thank healthy. You. Stay well. Bye.